Wonderful playing, and I have to point out to you that, you know, we really are 
letting you eavesdrop on, on a class. Marta is learning this piece. Okay, so it's not a piece that she's played 50 times and she's just come off to show off to you how wonderful she is. She is wonderful, but it's work in progress. And um, what I particularly like about your playing of this piece is that you're not treating it like it's the Beethoven Violin Concerto, you know? <laughs> On no account make music. This is Beethoven. It has to be strict. Pick your tempo, stay at that. This is Beethoven after all. Rubbish. And all you have to do is listen to the old masters like Josef Sigeti and Bruno Walter when they performed this piece. There are thousands of tempi in this first movement and thousands of moods. And it's the ones who treat it like a, a, a divine, untouchable piece that don't get anywhere near it. So I'm very, very happy that you're playing it like a real piece of music. So she goes faster, she goes slower, she goes louder, she goes wilder, it's fantastic. So I think the basic interpretation is great, okay? So um, there are just a few details. Probably your first was the first thing in. I think you just need to be slightly more of your first two or three notes. The top was fantastic. So can we just start it again? Just slightly more sound and then do your crescendo. Yeah, can you just do this? That's great at the... Can you do it without stopping? Just go around without stopping. Get new one. on this note. So we hear the sforzato, yeah? And I just wonder, whether it's too pushed out, whether you can make this first theme more serene, little calmer in the vibrato. It sounds so rich, and I would save that for later. And, you know, this is, it should be the dominant, almost like a dim, yeah? So, I do. can you go from here? From there. Now, calm. sound. Now even more. Yes. Oh, 
Okay, now when the woodwind. Right? You see the freedom. And when they play as a unit in the woodwind, they will rush a bit and then wait. And I think you should do the same when you take over. I don't think you need to go through. You're playing it too well. <laughs> so can we do a solo like a woodwind? Rush. Now. Okay, so you, it, free. I was, I couldn't hear you there. So just, you, yeah, you just need to be louder, with and ch ch as many bows as you like. Just straight there, yeah, yeah. Okay, now because these new additions turn up all the time, what are in your ur text? D sharp? What have you got here in the, the latest version? And so, suggested sharp. Or because I'm used to what? Okay, so these things, every time a new addition comes, you, you have a new interesting additions. Um, so that's fine, yeah. like that. And then uh, it was a miracle that Alexis caught you at the top. Thank you very much, madam, first time around. So somehow make it inevitable. I mean, it's great what you're doing. But make it logical, because with an orchestra, particularly if you have a conductor who's, who's not as clued up as Alexis, and most conductors are not as clued up as Alexis. I didn't say that, all right? Okay, so you have to sort of make it very obvious, because this is a free bar. But just make it obvious that if you imagine without a conductor that the orchestra would be able to catch you. Okay, so can you go from here? 
come back. Yeah. Time. Here, having done all the work, a few relaxing bars. Da -da 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 now this next bit, can you vary instead of and as you get to the end, I think you could be on rather than semper spiccato. It was a very regular bowing, and I'm not sure whether it, you get enough crescendo and direction. Yeah? That is very nice, but that is almost a written guarantee for disaster. <laughs> I just wonder, can you make it beautiful? Because the violins have to go. Again, you know, don't assume Alexis is going to go around with you and catch you. So. Okay, try and do your beautiful sort of diminuendo to the E, but can you somehow hand over a tempo for the strings to come in? Yeah, from your... Now, uh, the next entry for the violin, um, because it's such a well-known piece, we, uh, I mean, maybe not all of you have heard it, but it, it is such a familiar piece that we sometimes forget that Beethoven deliberately brings in the whole of the material in the wrong key. And it goes on and on and on in the wrong key. And you can tell when a violinist realizes this, and you can certainly tell when they don't. <laughs> uh, now, Marta realizes what's going on, but it's amazing how often you hear people playing this second entry. So instead of, can you play us, first of all, the first one?
Okay, now, somehow, it shouldn't have the same confidence that you have at the beginning, and yet you've got to play well. And throughout, I don't know if you can think even more, you're in the wrong key, so don't be so confident <laughs> with your, right? And even more searching, and I still think that's, it seems so sure, that you are right, and it's in the right key, and everything is going all right. It isn't. So I don't know if you can reconsider a little bit that fortissimo that you do. <laughs> so can you just give us So this is like the beginning, except, remember, this is the This is the right key. And through amazing things, so the tutti which we're leaving out, it's a huge amount of music in the wrong key, and this is how it finishes for the, the entry, if you like, in the wrong key. This is C major. time in the second bar. bar. Cadenza, go on, yes. Yeah, it, it sounds terrific. So this, uh, when you have these bars each time, when you're left on your own, I know there are quarter notes below. Uh, here's, um, can just be, it's like you're improvising. I could have put a metronome to it, which is fantastic, but I don't think it's, it's as free and as improvised as it could be. So can you try and be just freer when you have your bars on your own, particularly the second bar? Um, so, I mean, can we do four? Yeah, the pickup bar. Free. That's it. Just hold up. Hold up. Again. Free. Enough. Time. Yeah.
Okay, now this wonderful theme, it's, he's, he disguises it almost as well as Haydn would have done. You remember? Rhythm. I just wonder whether within this magical G minor, whether you can allow the shape to do real rubato. Can you try and go forward? And there will be resistance, which is right. But I don't buy so much. Then you hold up at the top. Can you try? So I have the same shape as that thing you played about 10 minutes ago. So I come. Okay, just before you go on, don't do the crescendo until it's marked. Only one bar, okay? I mean, it's so easy. Almost everybody does it. They do it at least two bars early. And he's very specific, I think, in this. Okay. I mean, after... I'm not sure about... Toffee. If you just make it, you, you did it wonderfully, the Kalando. Can you just try linking it? Just do a few bars before. I don't know. Pick, pick a bar number. Yeah? Now we're in the right key, <laughs> finally. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, you, you can talk a lot about right key and wrong key. You should feel it, you should all feel it in here somewhere, that it's wrong. We can help very much if we make it 
obvious by the sound we use. It, I thought it was wonderful if you can explore that, that the, um, the C major one, somehow you get a different, complete, uh, different palette of sound. And you play loud, you played loud, but it was just a different feel that you were suddenly in a strange place rather than being in a happy place the first time. And it's in C major, it's not even in the minor key. It's still a major key, but it's different. And it's also just a little side note about keys and colors, because um, I know, you know, with our friend Scriabin, he was thinking about pinks and reds and blues. Beethoven was also thinking about colors with different keys, to such an extent that when somebody said to him one day, okay, clever guy, I know that the pitch of the pianos in Mannheim is completely different from Vienna. So how do you deal with that? You know, if you've got a piano tuned a semitone higher in another city, you know, D major becomes E flat major in another city. So, so what's the point? And he said, absolutely, it's the intensity with which the pianist plays in a key doesn't matter what pitch the piano is tuned at. Irrelevant. It's just the way that they play C sharp minor or C major. He said, I, sh I can tell what key they're in if they're good. And so I think it's the same for us. We also have different pitches that we tune at. And uh, regardless of that, I think if you can just be aware of this aspect. Okay, so we're going both sides really. Uh, as I said, I'm so happy that you play it like a real piece of music. I think it's fantastic. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's terrific. Well done. Well, very well.